What's up everybody, Max Maxworks here, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to build a custom DIY from scratch set of rock sliders for your vehicle. Now, this design is pretty universal. You basically just adapt it to your wheelbase, but there are a few important design choices that I wanna talk about here uh, right off the jump. So first of all, what are rock sliders? Rock sliders are basically protection between your wheelbase, between your wheels, on the sides of your vehicles. They are designed to protect your rockers, rocker panels. Uh, undersides of your door, stuff like that. They're really useful if you go over a ledge and you gotta slide down or you gotta push your truck right up against the rock. They help protect your bodywork from damage. I have a 2009 GMC 2500. Uh, it's not a rock crawler. It's got a mile lift, 33s. But we'll be taking it through Moab. So I wanna build a set of rock sliders to help protect the body. When you're building rock sliders, the first question you have to ask yourself is, do I need my rock sliders to weld on or bolt on? In my case, I'm gonna weld on. It's an old truck. Uh, it's my truck. I don't have any plans on selling it or getting rid of it or whatever. So these are going to be on there forever. I don't ever plan on taking them off. So for me, it's going to be cheaper and faster and easier to just weld them on. So I'm going to weld them on. But the design doesn't really change. Basically, if you want to bolt them onto your frame, you can. I would recommend grade eight half inch hardware, four bolts per leg at a minimum. And that'll basically set you up uh, for success. The next question you have to ask yourself is, do you want a flat style or do you want kind of a boat side style? Visually, I really prefer the boat side, but let me show you here on my truck, uh, the reason that my truck will have uh, flat sides. So if you come over here, you can see on the truck, my doors actually come all the way down, see? to the bottom. So my rockers are covered inside the doors. This design makes it a lot easier to get in and out of the truck, uh, this design, helps uh, with water and noise intrusion, but what this design does not help with is uh, underbody protection. So if I hit something here, you can see it's gonna mangle both my rocker and my door, making the door difficult to close. And so the only real way that I can protect from that is to install a set of rock sliders and we're going to install our actual slider parts out horizontally from the body, as opposed to at an upward angle like you would on a boat side. Uh, because the doors have to be able to open, obviously, once you install the rock sliders. It's a pretty straightforward project. Like I said, this design will work for any vehicle uh, with that's body on frame. Where, and you basically just adjust the length of your slider to match your wheelbase. This is also going to be our first project where we get to break out the tubing bender. Uh, as you can see, it's all set up over here, ready to go. Uh, but actually, before we can get to that, we're going to uh, fabricate the main slider parts themselves. And it, those I prefer to build out of square tube. So real quick, before we jump into it, let's talk about materials. I'm using a two by three 120 wall main channel, uh, two inch by two inch 120 wall kickers, so connect the frame to the main channel. I'll be using inch and a half 120 wall uh, high roll electric welded tubing for my outer sliders that we're gonna we're gonna bend later. I would say that those are all good values for a heavy duty truck. Basically, I wanna be able to drop the entire 6,200 pound curb weight of the truck onto the slider. I wanna be able to jack up from it. Um, I want to be able to, you know, basically use this part of the frame. Uh, so let's get to it. There's a couple of different ways that you can design rock sliders in terms of uh, how long they are. In my case, as you can see, I've got a lot of siding to protect. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to measure how long is the body from edge to edge. And we're going to call that 106 and a half. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut... Uh, my main sliders to 108 or 109. That way uh, we can make them into more manageable pieces and then I'm gonna taper the ends. Uh, so for cutting stuff, I actually just bought a brand new blade, but uh, we have the trusty old Ironton dry cut saw here, 14 inch 72 tooth blade, a little grinder for cleanup action, and I'm gonna get everything uh, cut right now. You can see they're tight to the body weld uh, without touching it. You see those pinch points right in there is about a quarter inch of gap in there. And then under here, as you can see, we've tacked on our plates. And what I did was I measured from the ground to this point and then transferred that as the midpoint onto the frame. And so we've got one back there, 
that call, follows the curve of the frame. And then I've added this guy here, and later on we're gonna trace a line and cut it flush with the frame. But basically, we have our plates in place, and now we're gonna use this. This is two inch, 120 wall tubing to connect our main slider to the frame. And now what I've done is from the frame to the edge of the main slider, I've set a distance of 10 inches. That way the slider is underneath the most vulnerable part of the body. It's underneath the doors. The dance, I just, my dance. All right, as you can see, I'm very sweaty, very dirty, but we've made quite a bit of progress here. So let me show you. Getting the final fitment was a little trickier than I thought it would be, but I'm really happy with kind of how it turned out. You can see over here, this last kicker is gonna have to get boxed in. It's just the nature of using two by twos and angles. So we'll box in this side, and when we go to install this finally, we'll actually weld in the top up there inside of that bracket. Um, but all four stringers are there. The rock slider is, what well, doesn't move. It's all basically just tacked in. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna start figuring out how we're gonna bend our pipe uh, to make a kicker section. Okay, so let's talk about what the design for the sliders themselves is gonna look like here. So when you look at the profile of a vehicle, generally its widest point is right here at the mirrors. Now, obviously we're not gonna make rock sliders that stick out that far. They would look preposterous and it really wouldn't be all that useful. But in my personal opinion, a rock slider should be the second widest point on a vehicle behind the mirrors. And on this vehicle, if you look at it in profile, the widest point is right here at these door handles. So what we've done is I've hung a plumb bob down and this will basically set our widest point on the main slider. Now in the back, I want to kick out. And the reason I want to kick out is you can see this slider ends basically halfway to the tire. And so if there's an obstacle here, I want it to push out and away from the bed. Additionally, it provides us a step back here so that we can access the back of the bed a little bit more uh, conveniently. What we're gonna do is we're gonna basically build a kick out. And what a kick out is, is gonna be a little bit wider than the front rail. So if you can imagine, there's gonna be a tube that's gonna come out here it's gonna make a right angle, it's gonna come forward, and then it's gonna come at a 45 in and it's gonna mate back to this tube right here about where the uh, bed seam is. And then the next tube will follow up and then go all the way forward. So the way that I do this calculation is basically I overestimate these two ends, uh, cause we can obviously trim them back depending on what the total height we wanna set from the uh, slider. But basically we're estimating about five inches here, we have seven inches for our bed, we have 20 inches for our straight run, five more inches for this 45 bend, and then 10 inches at the end. And so what I've done is I've used the welded seam on this pipe as our guide marker, and then we've set five inches. So we're gonna start the bend right here. We've got seven inches for our bend. We've got, that brings us to 12. We've got 20 inches for our straight piece, and then five more inches for our 45 degree bend. And then this will continue on straight. And I know these values because when we built our cheater piece, I know that there's about seven inches here in this bend. So we're gonna start a little bit, right, basically right at this bend. Now, another tool that we have to make this work because we're doing two bends on one pipe and we want them to be in the same plane is this guy. We're actually gonna clamp this to our pipe and we're gonna use an angle finder uh, and basically set it at zero and make sure that as we move along from one bend to the next bend, uh, we do not end up basically cattywampus with it. Uh, but I'm gonna get it set up in the in the bender here and then we're gonna start bending it and see how this goes. Run things where you feel like Kick big, have a car, but a peace like Freestyle now, millions for each line 
too cool, man, I need ice in my beverage. Test this bigger, yeah, please find the exit. Okay, so we got our first uh, kicker built, and if you look at our mark, so I think we we hit our our points pretty good right here. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with this. In terms of level, mm, we might be a little bit off, and I want to show you guys this because this is this is my fault. This is my mistake, and this comes from experience. This is the first real piece that I've bent on my bender for an actual project. But it's close enough that I think it's fine. If we check our angles, this one, as you can see, is pretty much dead nuts on 90. And this one, 135, ah, uh, 135.7, right? It's because it's 180 minus 40 is 140 minus five is five. So we're, we're less than a degree off on our 45 degree bend. This is the first 45 degree bend I've made. I bent it to 48 degrees. So probably 47 and a half would have been, I've been a little bit closer, but again, this is the first production piece that I've made on my bender um, and I'm pretty happy with it. So now let's migrate our way over to the truck and take a look. If we just look at it, how it's built, um, there's about nine inches between this side and that, and you can see it's way wider than the tire. And maybe you would want this on something that was actually a rock crawler full time. But since this is mainly a work truck, I think we're gonna line this up where this is basically the same width as kind of the outside of the tire, maybe just a little wider. So after a bunch of measuring, I deduce that the correct spacing is five inches. So what you're seeing here, this represents uh, the rail that's on the truck. This distance to the inside here is five inches. So if we put the same measure here, it's pretty much dead nuts on five inches. And I basically measured the width of this to get the square. And so now we're gonna cut this tube basically at that point so that we can weld it on. And the reason for it being five inches gives it about a half an inch to three quarter of an inch just wider than the tire. Plus, I feel like that gives me a good area to really like have a foot rest and be able to stand up on. Additionally, um, as I mentioned earlier, come back over here to the truck, we have this plumb bob and the distance from here to the plumb bob is four and a half inches, which means that the outside of this pipe has to be four and a half inches. So if we make the back wider at five inches to the inside of the pipe and six and a half inches to the outside of the pipe because it's an inch and a half diameter, that's gonna make everything look right and it's gonna make everything feel right. That's what we're gonna do. So the next step is I'm gonna cut this pipe and we're gonna tack it onto the truck. So I went ahead and bent the main step. This distance in here is three and three quarter inches. Um, as you can see, it kind of follows here, and then you have a little bit of a kick, and then it follows all the way back. The distance in here is about 64 inches, so we're going to do 21-inch braces that are also going to be at 45-degree angles, kind of the, to match the rest of the design. So we're going to get those in next, and then actually after that, I think we are ready to take this thing off the truck for final welding. So now we've got our little kicker pieces in. They're just tacked in, because you know what they say, the grinder and paint makes me the welder I ain't. So now our next step is, I think we're ready to cut the tacks and lower this thing down and bring it inside the garage and then really do all of the uh, finish welding on this. Well, this one is a knocker. Stepping on the dance and I just my dance. Clock's 
on the east side. Bad bitch on the east side. Big split, chillin' on the beat side. Run things where you feel like. Kate big, have a car about the peace side. Freestyle now, millions in each line. Too cool, man, I need ice in my beverage. Test this big, please find the exit. Right now, my All right, let's take a look at where we finished up last night. This is our passenger side, fully welded, and basically it's ready to go. The only thing that remains is what we're gonna put in here, but other than that, this is ready to go back on the truck. On the driver's side, I managed to get started. You can see we've got three of the four mounting points in. The last one that needs to be installed is this guy right here in the back. That's what I'm gonna start working on right now. And so the next time you see me, we will be figuring out exactly how we're going to fill in um, our step area. I want to show you guys this as well, real quick. I went ahead and plated in the ends, so this is now all fully sealed. I definitely could have done a better job cleaning this one uh, before welding it, and I am kicking myself a little bit about that, because some of the welds definitely aren't great, but uh, that's nothing that a grinder and some rattle cans won't fix. I got black rust-oleum as well as primer. So those will be kind of the last things we do today. Okay, so as you guys can see, we got both fully welded, fully built here on the bench. And now it comes down to how are we gonna fill in this space? So this is started life as six inch wide, uh, 3 16 bar stock. And I kind of thought about doing a dimple die, but the largest dimple die I have is one inch. And 3 16 material is just a little too heavy for, to get a really good dimple out of it. Cause it's just, it's just not, it does not look great, right? I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't really appeal to me. So what I think we're gonna do is we're going to, so I used a two inch and a two and three quarter inch hole saws to trace these, this is basically one inch little marks and then two inch broad lines. What I think we're gonna do is we're gonna use the plasma cutter and cut in uh, radiuses and then grind them smooth. And then that'll kind of give some texture to this area. So it's not just like a, you know, just a blank bar. And it'll also give an opportunity for water and dirt and things to run off smoothly. So this basically, it's hard to do one hand, but you guys get the idea. This basically just drops down in here and uh, we're gonna use the plasma and cut in these radiuses, um, I think, and then just take a look at how that looks. I'm gonna get the plasma set up and we'll uh, go to town. there's kind of the plate we made sitting where it wants to sit. I would say for freehand half circles, these look pretty good. Um, like I said, I don't have a dimple die that really works with this thickness of material. I would say the fitment here and stuff like that isn't perfect, but I will say that this should be able to drain fluids really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it level perfectly and then we're just gonna burn it in. So we've got this side in, I got the fitment a little bit tighter on this side. Now we're gonna draw in our lines, get our uh, cutouts made, and then burn this thing in. This is our finished project. I've actually wiped this down with acetone already, and we've got this on the paint table. So you can see this, I'm just being lazy. We're using a non weld through primer. So I'm just basically taping up the edges here um, so that we can rip them off and then weld this to the frame. So we're gonna do a two-step paint. First step is we're gonna hit everything with a base gray primer. Once that's dry, we're gonna hit it with gloss black. Once that's dry, we can put it back on the truck and weld it in. Stepping on the dance, I lost my dance. Everything scattered. Right. 
right now man active Down with the game like now i'm running out of patience so we're going to go ahead and install these you can see the paint hasn't quite set i'm gonna have to touch up some of the paint here uh but honestly they're frame sliders so they're gonna get pretty beat up really the only time they need to look pic per picture perfect is for the thumbnail photo for this video after that what we've done is we've indexed the back index really nicely i left that tack in place so we know exactly where it's going so we're going to burn that in and then just go through make sure everything is level make sure i'm happy with the fitment and then basically go through and uh, burn these bad boys in so i got the first side welded on as you can see the truck is uh pretty much fully jacked up i don't have enough throw in the jack to uh flex up the rear but uh you can see most of the weight is is up on the stand not really seeing a lot of bending see it's all pretty straight next step is i'm gonna do a little bit more welding just to get all of the seams done and then uh, we'll give it a little little uh repaint as well as paint the areas of the frame where we welded and then we can move on to the other side all right guys let's go take a look at this finished product over here so there we go there's kind of the beauty shot i think it looks great obviously the paint's still got to cure a little bit we went ahead and painted in all of the frame connections just to make sure nothing rusts but <clears throat> this has been a hell of a project as i close out i wanted to point out a, a couple of things here first of all i worked by myself did this whole project by myself in my garage that's not for bragging that's just to let you guys know for me i'm a competent welder it's my first time tubing bending but i'm i'm pretty pretty good with with my tools pretty handy guy i have about 14 hours of actual labor time in this set including paint and everything else so basically i gave this a full saturday sunday that said in terms of materials we've probably got 250 ish dollars into this and the only sets i found that would fit this truck and frankly not that well that didn't mount to the pinch welds uh were almost two thousand dollars took me a whole weekend to get these built uh but it saved me 90 percent of the price of buying a prefab set that somebody else basically built that i would just have to weld on so far i'm pretty happy obviously i need to let the paint cure i think i'm gonna add a little bit of grip tape in a few places just to kind of up the safety factor a little bit but other than that i'm super happy this old truck this is my workhorse i plan on keeping this for quite a while uh, i do a lot of a lot of work with it um it's take, gonna take us to utah we're gonna hit moab which is why we uh put all this energy into this doing this now if you want to check out some of the other videos i have in the truck check out my channel um i've had this truck for seven or eight years and a lot of the custom audio work and some of the modifications that i did i did very early on so those videos are probably six or seven years old now but uh i'll link in the description and probably up in this corner or whatever to let you guys know take a look at those with that i'm max this is max works if you like this video hit the like button if you like the channel subscribe check out my other videos uh if you built custom sliders if you want to laugh at me about how i work a tubing bender comment down below let me know i am learning how to do some of these metal fabrication things for the first time i'm learning with you guys and i'm just trying to show you how i do it and hopefully this will give you some ideas uh for your own projects catch you guys in the next one